Thank you for tuning in for another Rice Rewind. Today, I'm continuing my re-releases of my interviews with the late legendary John McAfee. For those of you who are unfamiliar with who John was, he was a controversial antivirus software entrepreneur, cybersecurity expert, computer programmer, and two-time presidential candidate. I did interview him a total of seven times. And you have an opportunity, if you have not watched those seven interviews, to watch them with this week's re-releases of the McAfee Rice Rewinds. This is interview number five, and it took place March 18th, 2020. He was still on the run, and he was still off-grid. Everything going all right? I can't hear you. Yes, you can. I'm just not yeah. talking to you. I'm fucking with you, dude. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell you were doing. <laughs> how, how the fuck you been, dude? I've been good. How That's about good. you, my friend? Listen, I think, I think we, we've spoken enough now that, that I can fuck with you. As a friend, totally. what a friend. Okay? Totally, totally, I, man. All right. Good. Yeah, I mean, I definitely consider yeah, you. Please a don't take offense. Don't take offense. <laughs> no, not at all, man. Not at all. Not at all. Okay. Well, I mean, you obviously need no introduction, man. I kind of like the way that you did that. I think this is perfect. I want to leave it kind of unedited and um, upload this this afternoon. Or so everybody can check this out. Now, I want to cover, I really wanted to cover things about McAfee 2020. I wanted to talk about your decks, but we've got so much going on in the world. I mean, we got the virus that shall not be named because YouTube doesn't like us to say the word. But you're, you feel free to say it because it's not going to matter. So coronavirus. And <laughs> the economic collapse that we got going on. <laughs> Where are you, you want to say? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. Which word does YouTube not want us to say? Uh, either coronavirus or COVID nineteen or all the above. Why? Or, yeah. Why? I don't Why? know. I don't censor. Are you shitting me? Censorship, are you shitting man. me? No, no. Team Team YouTube on um <coughs> on Twitter on Twitter just posted two days ago saying that because of the virus and because they're not going to be running as many employees. Their automated system is going to be fully intact and they're going to be deleting videos and even videos that are not even um, going against community guidelines. So what the hell do you think about that, John? Well, listen, <laughs> we just left Spain. We were there for a week. <laughs> Two days after we got there, martial law <laughs> came into effect. <laughs> We've been locked in a fucking room for five days. Um, being able to go out only for food if it's an emergency or to the hospital if you're dying. <laughs> and otherwise, you're not allowed to walk on the beach. You're not allowed to get out on your fucking balcony and get sun. No, no, you're, you're locked in your fucking... I mean, so we left that. Um, does it get any crazier? Does it get any stranger? Does it get any worse? And people are going... You know, you've got to get behind the bandwagon. It's a terrible thing. It's killed less than 10,000 people. You yeah. understand? Diarrhea kills over a million children a year. For fuck's sake, people. The flu kills 600,000. And in five months, coronavirus has killed 8,000 people. What a horror. Please, do you not see what's happening? You're being fed. <laughs> well, okay, so so John, you're 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 I mean you're one of the leading security experts in the world. I mean, you self you say this. I mean, you're definitely one of the people. So what what is what's going on, man? And you're running for president. So I mean, what's going on? Like, what is really happening? Why are they shutting down borders? Why are they shutting down restaurants? Why are they, you know what's going on that that's that we're not being told that we're not aware of? <laughs> I've been watching your Twitter, man, so I know you got a lot to say. 
I don't know if if anyone's ready for the truth. Uh, that that's my problem uh, because the the instant uh, the few possibilities for what the truth might be, the instant these things are mentioned, uh, I am branded as a madman, a lunatic, um, a conspiracy theorist. But you want to know what's happening. Yeah. It's not Are a you? virus problem. I promise you this. It has killed fewer than 8,000 people. It is not a problem in five months. Same period of time. 600,000 people died of the flu. Same period of time. One million children died from diarrhea. And these aren't even major causes of death people. And yet, oh yes, almost 10,000 people have died in five months. This is a horror of unbelievable proportions. Yet you go on John Hopkins, um, the, the uh, medical university, and you check their data, the virus transmission is fucking flat, people, flat. Yeah. This is the slowest growing, moving, transmitting virus on fucking record. <laughs> I know, but people, people, people just don't... Do you know. not see? There are only... These are the facts, are they not? Oh, we need to add a few more facts before we start analyzing. Fact number one, China shut down its equivalent of Silicon Valley. Wuhan, the research and development capital of China, shut down the city. Why? We're going to contain this... Uh, airborne virus and, and yes we all know that if you sneeze the wind can blow it many miles you know, maybe even a hundred but do you see a fucking dome get lowered over wuhan i didn't right did you see some miracle of engineering that says no air cannot pass between this part of the city and the rest of the world please god wake up it's an airborne virus something else is going on Look at the death statistics. Higher than fuck. 5%, 4%. That's massive considering flu is 0 0.17. <laughs> fuck me. That is devastating. But where do those numbers come from? Inside Wuhan, where no reporter is allowed and no one is able to verify numbers. Right. And inside Italy, uh, these two account for 90% of the world's infections. I find that to be strange, don't you people? Um, I'm not saying that it has anything to do with the fact that the Vatican is located there and that the Council of Bishops is soon going to be introducing reforms which will change the fundamental nature of the Catholic Church. No, no, <laughs> I would never say there is a connection between the two. No. However, in an entire world where over 150 countries have already been infected, that only two, Italy and China, account for all the infections. Now, that's scenario number one, that <laughs> numbers don't match. Scenario number two, China, who has been a standout in the world and the most racist country in the world, you know, you know what they call uh, us uh, non-Chinese, Gaijin. Yeah, I heard that term. Gaijin, well, it means basically... Foreigner? <laughs> I thought it meant foreigner. I wish, wouldn't yes, that be nice? nice. <laughs> Would that not be nice? No, no. Um, it's closer to the word aboriginal, do you understand? We are the aborigines. Like we're primates or something. Well, we're exactly what, what the English thought the Native Americans were uh, and what the Australian whites thought the aboriginals were. No, we're nothing, do you understand? Okay, so now let's look at scenario two. China, which is not stupid either in leadership in technology, nor in the general fucking populace. Odd how two billion people can be so unstupid, but the Chinese are. Might have said, here's what we're going to do, people. We're going to sacrifice Wuhan. Why? 
because we need a story. And that story is, uh, we have a virus of such virulent proportions that 5% of the population is just dying. Well, that's a shitload percentage for everybody, let's face it. But outside of Wuhan, where international reporters can look at the statistics, what's the rate? 0.16%. Right. What's the death rate from the flu? 0.17%. So it's slightly less deadly than the fucking flu. Where does the Vatican come into this? Well, I promise you people, within six months you are going to see a set of reforms initiated within the Catholic Church that will make it unrecognizable as the Catholic Church. Now, That's interesting. All you need is intervention from God, do you not? What if in the height of all of this in Italy, which is as the second <laughs> Italy, Italy, please God, people, has the second largest infection rate on the fucking planet, has realized, because here's what the church does. I don't know if you've ever seen Werner Herzog's Agena, The Wrath of God, <coughs> uh, in German, Der Zorn Zottes, starring, starring Klaus Kinski. And in there, there is a scene where, and this is all true, where Pizarro, wandering through the jungles of South America, um, you know, is approached by the priest and says, um, the Catholic Church uh, always supports uh, those who are in power. And Bizarro was not at that time. But the Catholic Church still supports those who are in power. And you think the Vatican does not fucking know China? is going to rule the world. Well, let's get in bed with those motherfuckers. Let's help them with their thing. They'll help us with ours. Because in order to rule the world as Catholics, to vie for power uh, next to the Chinese, we need more power. And we need intervention from God. And we need more belief that God will fucking save us. Okay, that's scenario number two. Okay. You want more? <laughs> There are seven scenarios that fit the facts. Those are two. Use your own common sense, people. So, I mean, do you, do you think that there's anything? I mean, I, I didn't. The Vatican stuff is something that I'm not even really familiar with, so I definitely want to look into that more. But oh, you did, Well, hang on. The world's richest organization by a factor of 10. <laughs> we cannot possibly ignore them in any of our <laughs> judgments and evaluations, can we? No, no, you really can't. I just didn't really think about it. It was so much going on. I, there, it's been information overload. It's been hard for me to process everything and be able to think clearly 100% about all this stuff and try to connect some of these dots because I feel like there's something going on in the United States. I, I feel yeah, like okay, well, we need to actually address number three out of the seven probabilities or possibilities okay. that meet all the facts. Number three, ah, by far the most horrific, that the Western world governments in league with China, as opposed to the rest of the world, meaning Africa, Australia, all of Asia, south of China, um, you know, uh, Canada, rich places. No, that outside of those areas, the USA, Europe, and China, for example, possibly Russia, although I do not think so, said, listen, I know we've had our problems, but wouldn't we all benefit if all of our citizens were just slaves? Wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it be better than having free goddamn citizens who we're going to deal with? We, as the emperors, would have 10 times the power. Now, let's set aside our differences just, just for a moment, John. See what would happen if, for example, we, the Chinese, were willing to sacrifice one of our cities, Wuhan, at least economically, for half a year. 
in order to frighten the world and frighten the citizens to the point that they will accept uh, anything that you tell them. If you simultaneously promise them, they will be safe. And we will be safe, people, because this virus is not a fucking threat. This is the beauty of it. <laughs> we lease something that the Chinese, the only ones who can tell us, of course, horrific, it's horrible, Wuhan, devastation, uh, horror, horror, horror. <laughs> and us, we have no choice to believe them because we're getting infections over here. How many people are dying? Less than 10,000 in five fucking months. How many died from flu in the same time? 600,000. How many children died from diarrhea? in the same fucking time and Google those people, one million. What the fuck, why aren't we doing something for those one million children instead of worrying about the 8,000 in five months deaths from a non-fucking threat? Oh, so that's number three <laughs> out of seven. <laughs> Use your heads for the other four. I'm not gonna give you no goddamn clues, people, all right? Well, I mean, where are you leaning at? Like, what do you think? I mean, like, like where is your judgment at? Like, where is your, like, where's your I'm, I'm leaning like, between, I'm this? leaning, I'm leaning between two and three. That China is trying to destroy uh, the rest of the world economically. Yeah. Rather than having to go out with this, why go out and waste bullets whacking people? Let them starve to death. It costs us nothing. Do you understand? This is the logic, people. <laughs> and if you're starving to death, it's not going to happen. I have spent the past week under martial law in Spain and food. <laughs> it's like dwindling to nothing in five fucking days. Five fucking days. Can you imagine five goddamn months? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, dude, the timing of this thing is crazy. I mean, like we were, I mean, studying economics, I mean, we've seen since 2008, this system was going to collapse. And um, it's just, the, again, the timing of this virus coming out. And then now you're seeing like historic lows, stuff that we've never seen before in the stock markets uh, with the Federal Reserve, uh, just uh, more quantity easing. It's just people, here's what you need to worry about. I have spent the past week in the most severe um, martial law on this planet today where you can't get within three feet of another person ever. You cannot have more than one person in the car and that person must be the driver. You, everything is closed, every shop, every business. You may not invite friends over, neither may you go to your friend's house. You must stay in your legal fucking residence 24 hours a day. You may not go out on your balcony to get sunlight. Today, before I left, I went with my driver to the supermarket and was almost arrested by two uh, officials because we were closer than three feet together. Why? I'm 74. I'm half fucking deaf. If you're not shouting in my ear, I can't fucking hear you. Right. And we were both almost arrested. We violated the three-foot law, the one-meter law. You may not be closer to another human being ever than one meter. Now, they can't enforce this in your fucking houses, obviously, but you can't go to visit a friend. You got a lover. You don't have to fuck that lover later because you ain't going to get in touch with them. Not until this martial law is lifted. That's what we were under. And <clears throat> thank the fucking Christ we're out of there. <laughs> this is crazy, man. I mean, this is, I mean, I like it. I mean, I appreciate you taking the time to do this. I mean, because I know a lot of people are canceling interviews and you've been going through such, such like crazy stuff just normally. I mean, you being on the run, uh, Listen, but, but adding this not, to the mix. You know, yeah, no, how, how no it's, it's, in, it's insane. Yeah. Now, listen, and here's the other issue that, good God almighty, I mean, in Spain, while we were there, there were no riots. 
few people, even at the grocery store, people were terrified. They'd, nobody out. Listen, you could not go out and walk on the beach, and even at three o'clock in the morning, you'd get arrested. You're not allowed out of your house. I'm sorry. What are you doing out? I don't give a shit. Against the law, come with us. Um, that that in this, nobody was upset. Nobody was going, what the fuck? No, nothing. They went indoors quietly, locked them, and did what they were told. Well, except for me, I ain't doing that shit. I'm sorry. Right. I'm 74. I'm gonna, I might die anyway. Probably much more chance I will die tomorrow of a stroke, heart attack, <coughs> or too much sex. Um, <laughs> in three and so who gives a shit? No, I'm sorry. And I did. I went out. I photographed and things like that. Um, people, it upset people. Well, fuck me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what, what does my being out and risking my life have to do with you? Right. If you stay locked inside your fucking apartment, what I do it's got nothing to do with you. So shut the fuck up. That was my attitude. <laughs> I probably could not have kept that up long without being whacked or, you know, disappeared by the Spanish authorities. Thank God we got out. But in any case, um, what was the question? I, I've, I've I don't even remember, this. honestly. Uh, but I did want to ask, like, real quick, like, how you and Janice are actually doing through all this. What? Oh, fuck me. <laughs> I thrive on this. I'm 74. I mean, I've seen some shit you wouldn't believe. No, this, this is a piece of cake. Okay. I just, I was just. Are you guys in a safer okay. place now? Oh, fuck yes. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Oh, fuck yes. I mean, I'm working through this. Here was the only thing. It was, I get bored easy. That's that's the only problem we had. I mean, I, God damn it, you want me to stay inside my goddamn house for five days? No, one you're telling me it's going to be a month? Well, fuck you in the ass. That ain't happening. What are my legal goddamn options? Groceries? I went to grocery shop every fucking morning. Why? I'm an old man. I don't have refrigerator. I'm 74. I have to have fresh food. I have to survive. The authorities go, hmm, okay. Yes, okay. The, I, I go I go out. <laughs> uh, if I'm not going to the grocery store, where am I going? To a doctor. Why? I am 74. I got some serious fucking problems. Wait till you get to 74. Ah, oh, si senor. Si senor. You got that seniority, no. literally. <laughs> <laughs> si senor. So, understandable. Why? I'm a foreigner. I'm trying to speak a goddamn language, right? Um, and I'm communicating enough, and so you got to give me some grace. Why? Because that part of the world where we were is all tourist money. And the tourists don't bother to speak your language or pick up after themselves or even act decent, right? This is why they get away from their own country to show their asses to everybody else and then go back prim and proper home. So no, that's what they're used to. <laughs> so I'm actually trying to speak your language, trying to give you a, listen, I'm a foreigner, I'm in stuck in this, I'm 74, I need to drive. It's the other thing. You can't have more than one person per car. Well, I have a driver, I, I don't want to drive. So uh, we were stopped yesterday. What's going on? And I, in my broken Spanish, lo siento, señor, lo siento. Tengo siete cuatro años. No puedo caminar. Me have, yo soy el jefe. So it's going, oh, I always see an old man can't drive. Because <laughs> there's no taxis. Can't take a fucking, no public trans, no public anything. Wow. How am I supposed to go? And get food, motherfucker. And so they're all going, they were so reasonable. Every single time we were stopped, reasonable. Oh, okay. Whereas we saw them scoop up people who were, <laughs> we stopped at the stoplight and there was a man standing <laughs> on the street corner. A police car came up, two cops got out, grabbed him, threw him in the <laughs> and drove up. Why? What the fuck are you doing standing on a street corner? You're not supposed to be out of your house, right? Right. <laughs> I'm sorry to laugh. I don't think they tortured him or whacked him. They probably 
get him in jail a couple of days and find him. So no big fucking deal, I'm sure. Nevertheless, just to see this poor captive bastard. <laughs> I don't know why it's like, doing I mean, it's it's crazy entertainment, man. Um, do you uh, think yes. do you think any of this is going to affect uh, what's going on with the presidential run, with your run for president, with anybody you run for president? Listen, people, I would be much more concerned about whether you're going to survive this okay. as a human being, as an entity. Are you going to have the food, the water, the medicine, the heat, the clothing, and the shelter? If not, you are not surviving because there's some serious fucking shit coming down this pipe. And you, if you are not prepared for it, uh, this is Darwinism in effect. Well, I mean, considering all this and what's going on. I'm going to put my here. glasses back on. Let me tell you, listen, I wear sunglasses not for effect because two years ago I had, oh, thank God, a <laughs> cataract operation. Uh huh. Again, I'm 74. Your eyes go bad after a while and cataracts develop. That's a milky shit where you can't see garbage. So I had a cataract operation. Great, I can see. But if the light is any brighter than this, it I'm in pain. Oh, okay. oh, fuck me, it's painful. The back of my eyes going, ah, close the eyes, close the eyes. Oh, because for, for, tw well, for 20 years, I've been looking through a dark cloud, remember, the cataract. And so when that was removed, there was a sudden... And my body, I guess, is too old to adapt to that sudden shift. So, please, uh, it's not for fact I'm not trying to hide myself. I oh, no, them I off never, I've never for the first that one of the either. first times ever in an interview so that you could see my eyes as I told you something extraordinarily true. All right? Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate that, John. Um, well, I guess, you know, one last thing, if you don't mind, that I'd like to, you know, Considering everything that's going on and everything, are there any last words of wisdom that you would like to leave people with? God, let's not say last words. I mean, I am 74 after all. <laughs> that's, what I, but that's what I'm saying, dude. I mean, there's a lot going on. And you're 74, man. I'm worried about you. We need all you. All right. All right. <clears throat> if I have to have last words, it's this. Children. Do ever only what you love and nothing else whatsoever. If you wake up on Monday and you're not going, yay, it's Monday, I get to go to work. And instead of going, oh, fuck me, another week, then don't bother going in. Take out your phone and quit. And if on Friday, when you're coming back to your family, realizing you got to spend two entire days with them, including your wife, and you look at your wife or your husband, and that person who seven years ago you were so in love with that you were dancing on wisps of rosy clouds, and you loved everyone and everything in this world, and today, Seven years later, you look and you don't even know <laughs> who that spouse is, man or woman. And that love is just not there. And that was the reason that you did, in fact, get married and own up to the truth. Smile at everybody in the backyard barbecue. Say, I'm going upstairs for a minute, babe. I'll be right back. Don't bother packing the fucking bag. Get your money, your wallet, a coat, because the world may be cold, two pair of shoes, a backpack is the way you need. Quietly walk out the front door, get into your car, smile to yourself and nod. Finally, back out of the driveway and go and visit your real fucking life. That would be my advice to people. Thank you very much for having me on. Hey, John, thank you as always. I appreciate it. You stay safe. Tell Janice to stay safe, man. I love you guys. I will. Thank you. Bye-bye.